The hallmark of the 21st century is isolation. Mm, probably more than 50% of men, as they get older, find they're alone. Wife's died, but more often now, wife's gone. Didn't stick around that long. Could manage on her own with state help, or at least thought she could when she made the break. And uh, leaves the man without anything. It's not like the 19th, 18th, 17th century where he had a, an extended family you just fall back into. Or, you know, they were with you anyway in the household and it's not like that. If the wife goes for alone, um, had trouble, um, extended families, um, of the 19th century turned into nuclear families in the 20th century and turn into one parent but mostly no parent families in the 21st century which is a euphemism for saying you're on your own it was said uh, as so by Jesus that man who puts away his wife causes her to commit adultery because of course there was no one to care for her and protect her um, and uh, in a society that despised people who were once married but then divorced um, left her without support and hope unless she turned to marriage or prostitution. The Old Testament gives the Bible a bad name as regards blame. Jesus is rather more enlightened. And we need to be more enlightened in a world where there's desperate isolation, loneliness, fear of the future, Being at risk on your own, nobody to care for you, nobody to care for, drives you out to attempt other relationships which typically don't turn out so well. I was very fortunate my second relationship was also 18 years and uh, we were in love, absolutely lovely. And the third relationship was utterly perfect until Bubby came along and um, he had postnatal problems of wife getting cyclical type depression and mm, completely changing character. Life can bring some frightening experiences. I realised I hadn't been fearful and afraid of what my future was. In fact, I hadn't experienced fear since I was a young teenager. Western society doesn't understand how to live. It thinks it has its own culture, but it doesn't have. It's simply got a decaying culture. And... Uh, other cultures and ethnic groups find it astonishing. Acute lack of joy, love, commitment, stability. Acute lack of real family life. An acute lack of relationships. A quick abandonment of anyone that could be a burden. Uh, supposedly, at least some in the care of the state, who um, likes to rely on a community that's not there. 
and then produces mythical statistics to flatter its achievements. It's said that the Internet um, Foundation uh, relied on pornography was the vast bulk of um, downloads and so on made upon it. It's said now that there are more um, marriages coming before the courts for um, battery of the husband rather than battery of the wife. Youth suicide rates have escalated. More than half the men over 50 are diagnosed as being chronically depressed. And people's physical shape is largely abysmal. It's a society that doesn't know how to live. And sadly, its um, medical ability concentrates on prolonging such existence. Um, we can't let people die because there's no hope of what's beyond. In a word, it's a world without the awareness of God the personification of what people truly value. They want love, they want kindness, faithfulness, joy and peace. They want family, they want fellowship. They long for joy and meaning to life. Their society is disintegrating around them. And others will take its place. Be a bit like the Soviet Union wasn't attacked from without, it just crumbled from within. Quite simply, if your people do not prosper, and your country declines. It's always been the case that the ultra-rich in any country have been ultra-rich. But if the bulk of the population becomes desperately unhappy, your society folds. Your view of the um, stages of life is rather uh, insightful. Uh, that when you get past the household stage, which takes you up to about mid 40s, I think, in their estimation, you go into the um, uh, renunciate stage of um, contemplation and uh, you know, you don't battle to work to the end of your life. You pass the children's stage, so you unload the stuff you don't need. And, uh, well, in Western understanding, you retire, but it's a bit more spiritual than that. You're involved in uh, being a blessing and a helping, a bit like the grandparent tries to be. Um, some are so also involved with their own children's children, their grandchildren, that um, they do have a semi-extended family. It's, uh, it's not completely alone. And then after that, well, you're, if you survive that long, I don't know, uh, late 60s, 70s, then you're, you're an ascetic, uh, you know, wanderer, you've gone ideally completely past the um, obsessions that the world offers. Um, 
you're nearer heaven than earth. Well, I'm not sure how many people even lived long enough to achieve fullness of such stages, but there is a natural um, progression through such in life. And to deny it by, well, like Marshall having marriage, a state, uh, extending rather more into the years. I mean, my youngest child, I must have been 66 when she was conceived. 65, 66. And, um, hmm. Of course, she was a great blessing to me, of course, but, uh, well, there are some strengths in having children late. You're more of a grandparent, I suppose. You're more stable, more wise, um, far more patient, ideally, I think. More experienced, you know. And uh, you can be so much more of a blessing. You've got more time on your hands to, than a parent, especially if both parents are working. You can be an incredible blessing. And uh, they'll never forget you. Hmm. You should take care of yourself, though they don't find it easy when you die on them. <laughs> Western culture, as it's mythically referred to, is not a recipe for peace and joy and happiness and fulfillment. It's a disaster. And because of rank materialism, so much of the world presses into mimicking its lack of values and so on. But basically it's all show and not much reality. And very little religion to rescue it. Man has proved that he doesn't need God in order to be thoroughly miserable. Sometimes wistfully wonders why God is not more there for him. But he spends so much time not looking for God that he can't see him even when he's standing in front of him. All the blessings of life tend to escape his awareness. Being ever concerned in improving his material situation which, of course, with the advancement of age, tends to be diminishing, not increasing. Although his finances might increase. If he's managed to sacrifice his emotional and spiritual life enough, to have built up a nest egg of retirement fund that can afford the bills of um, the rest home that he's interred in. You can find he leaves very little to his children, but it doesn't matter because they don't really matter too much to him anyway. And have probably shown a, an acute lack of concern for the parents' welfare as they got older. There are some lovely exceptions, of course, and they stand out a mile. Um, whether religious or not, some people have a natural godliness a loving kindness. There are religious saints and there are non-religious saints, just as there are wicked religious people and wicked secular people. And by wicked I mean 
those that purpose harm to others by the way they live and exploit everything around them. Be careful who your friends are. Some friends, you don't need enemies. Love your neighbour, not all the people you come into contact with. You very quickly find that the socialising is very shallow. There's no relationship there. And if it lasts a few years, you're surprised. The idea of the natural consequence of materialism is that it drives you into an awareness of your need for God. That you find uh, the materialist way of life desolating as time goes on. And it's a bit late to um, devote your life to God, but it's not too late to take consolation in uh, simply God's kindness. Despite you ignoring him for so long, when he's provided the air you breathe, the material that your body's made of, and the universe in which you live, even time and space and matter. And you haven't valued life until you realize it's getting worse and worse. And it's not that you now nobly give up materialism for spirituality. It's that you take up spirituality precisely because materialism has given you up. Moved on to court someone else. There's always more foolish youth to be lured into its embrace. And simply, if you don't keep the first and second commandment, I mean, as presented by Jesus, to love God with all that you are, and the one that rescues you, to love them as yourself. Unless you take such advice very seriously to heart, Your life will quite simply be tragic, especially from your point of view. If you don't give love, you don't receive it. And if you don't receive love, well, you can't survive. And the surviving that you, you, that you do have is just a nightmare. I'm not sure why people want to believe in chance and uncertainty. Why they want to believe in the... in death. That it's simply the cessation completely of everything. Why they don't want to love the very personification of what they truly value. would be a complete mystery but for the obvious misinterpretations made by man's religions misinterpreting the true nature of God his paternal loving kindness and grace and power awesomeness And that if people have values and hopes and desires, 
how much more does God have who made them? We are in fact wonderfully and fearfully made. Our body is a bewildering marvel of biological engineering. And we are set in a universe that's incalculably large and astonishing. And we experience a consciousness which has no explanation whatsoever for its existence. The thought of making a machine or a robot conscious is almost ludicrous to us. We can get robots to function. We can't typically get them to repair themselves and reproduce and reproduce in variety at that. And uh, I'm not at all clear how you build in emotion and a happiness that tends to influence your hopes, and decisions and plans. Nor can we explain what thought is, where thoughts come from, how they're organized, how we select the words we speak, where thoughts come from at all. Our environment, the world, our experience is staggeringly inexplicable. We dismiss it by saying, well, it's consequence of chance. But chance usually brings breakdown, dissolution of the structure. Chance does not build towering buildings, mighty highways and bridges. Chance does not build civilization. It's the net effect of the hopes of its citizens that determines the future of a nation. I think it is the case that except you hope in the existence of a loving, all-powerful God. You will not enter into life eternal. The personification of a perfect, loving person is all our hope. Thank you, Dad.